Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning for those in Japan. Uh, good afternoon, good evening for whatever uh, part of the world uh, everyone online is listening to us. Uh, welcome. This is uh, the, the session about digital sovereignty in Brazil. For what and for whom? Uh, my name is Raquel Gato. I am uh, the vice president for the Internet Society Brazil chapter. Uh, and I have the pleasure here to have the president of the, the Internet Society uh, Brazil chapter. Isaac Brazil, uh, Flavio Wagner uh, on site, and uh, online I have uh, my colleagues uh, who are going also to, to present in this session. Uh, Ana Paula Camelo from CPI FGV. Uh, Ana, welcome. And also online I have the pleasure to co moderate the session with Pedro Lana. Uh, our director uh, from Isaac Brazil. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, Lori Shippers, uh, who is uh, online and is our rapporteur, as well as uh, other members from Isaac Brazil who are uh, on site. Uh, thank you very much for, for everyone joining. Um, so without further ado, uh, I just want to, uh, as my role as moderator, I'm just going to give a little bit of context uh, in terms of uh, why this this is one of the topics that Internet Society is tackling. Uh, first of all, um, in the flow of the global vision that Internet Society uh, is is putting forward. Uh, then I will have Flavio presenting um, about the, the the Brazilian situation, the Brazilian scenario, and and how we are going to tackle the the, the research. Uh, and then uh, Anna is going to to give us the the neat grill. Uh, detailed version of this project and uh, and then I, I'm opening up for questions so we have 45 minutes to to go uh, all through um, so let me just start by by saying so uh, the question that was put on the table uh, by by the, the internet society the international organization is what is the biggest threat for the internet this is such a simple question in a way, but with very complex answers. And uh, it's interesting because there was one big concern that arises from the answers uh, that were collected. And the answer is Splinternet. I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with that, but the Splinternet is when you don't have the network of networks. The internet is made of these smaller uh, networks, voluntary adoption uh, of a common protocol, TCP IP, uh, that makes uh, this the internet of, uh, you know, the networks of the, inter uh, of the networks, the internet working, uh, open, global, uh, secure, trustworthy uh, internet. And when it comes to the threats, uh, to divide it, to fragment the internet, there are multiple ways it can take place. Uh, from political view, uh, let's say jurisdiction issues, uh, it might be from uh, digital sovereignty issues, digital uh, national security issues, uh, from technical challenges, uh, infrastructure challenges. But in all of those, there is um, uh, pre-question, which is what makes the internet the internet, and what we are going to protect uh, from not uh, being divided, from not being uh, uh, splintered, uh, splitted. So uh, the Internet Society started uh, precisely to define what are those fundamental characteristics, the, the, the principles, uh, uh, the, the, the main values uh, for the Internet to be what it is. Uh, and it published a policy brief uh, back in 2019. Uh, sorry. And then uh, it followed up with an impact assessment, a toolkit. So it's not only about uh, describing what it is to keep it open, uh, globally connected, secure it just to all worth internet, but it, it is also about uh, how you can assess what is going on uh, in your country, in your region, and, and so on. Um, and then, um, 
uh, there are now uh, the chapters and, and, and the global community is taking up and is creating these impact briefs, which are basically documents uh, taking one case study. For example, in Brazil, we had uh, one case study about a, a proposal for a bill, um, for a law uh, regarding content moderation. So and 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 fake news. So that's one of the uh, the examples of those impact briefs that are being populated um, in this main project. So taking this lead on. Um, so here's the biggest threat. Here's what we want to protect. Then what are the main um, uh, overarching uh, themes that uh, that uh, we are seeing this uh, in the the public discourse. Uh, so first of all, you have internet fragmentation, right? Um, it is by nature uh, an ISOC DNA to take the technical considerations uh, for internet fragmentation. So it's when the, 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 the internet is no longer, uh, for example, using a common protocol, when the, the, the internet and uh, those smaller networks are not uh, connected uh, to, to the whole uh, internet and so on. Uh, but then it needs to be recognized that there are other forms being discussed, including here at the IGF, the, the policy network on internet fragmentation is also taking up on the other concepts for internet fragmentation, which will take also the user experience in the sense uh, and, and, and the governance. Uh, the, the internet governance for argumentation, right? Um, but we are not going to go for deep dive on those yet, uh, but just to acknowledge that there is this overlapping between um, internet fragmentation and digital sovereignty. Whereas digital so sovereignty is one of the, 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 the conditions, one of the situations where uh, internet fragmentation is uh, taking place or, or risks to take place. Um, and then I come to the main <laughs> topic of the session today, which is uh, digital sovereignty and all the, uh, the different definitions al also that you can take in this uh, in the sense that digital sovereignty is um, a political view when we take up the nation state concept. Uh, it can be a technological um, uh, matter when we are talking about the appropriation for, uh, for example, in developing countries to be more of uh, producers than uh, just receivers. Uh, it is also a, an economic issue and it is uh, also uh, uh, a power struggle in historical terms for uh, new shapes of digital colonialism. But um, this is uh, something just as an overview um, that we wanted to bring in terms of how it has evolved the discussions uh, in terms of assessing the risks uh, for the internet, getting it to understand uh, what is the internet that we want to protect and what are the shapes that is, is taking place and these discussions uh, on, on the internet ecosystem. And then um, I, I'm going to give the floor next to Flavio, who is going to tell us how this is uh, taking place in a Brazil scenario. Thank you very much, Flavio. Thank you, Raquel. So, uh, hi everybody. Uh, nice to have you with, with us here in this morning in Japan. So, uh, Brazil is a very large country, one of the 10 largest economies in the world, uh, with uh, strong industry in various uh, uh, sectors. And also in the digital realm, Brazil has a lot uh, to, to show. And uh, because of this uh, context, uh, Brazil, along the time, has proposed and implemented various uh, local regulations uh, regarding the Internet. For instance, the so-called Marco Civil, the Internet Bill of Rights, which uh, was approved in 2014, uh, setting a whole uh, uh, set of uh, uh, rights uh, principles. It's a principle-based uh, law. Uh, later on, in 2019, uh, we approved our uh, uh, privacy law, very similar to the GDPR, for instance, in the European uh, Union. And these uh, laws are, are very compatible with international standards regarding rights and duties. 
there are many other discussions going on in Brazil. There are regulatory proposals uh, being discussed in, in the National Congress, such as the, the Artificial Intelligence Bill, um, the Fake News Bill for, for uh, content moderation. There are many discussions in the country regarding uh, local law on cybersecurity, uh, various discussions on, on dimensions of platform regulation, not only the question of content moderation and, and fighting disinformation, but also economic issues. And, and in there are open discussions, not all, not all uh, already in the form of bills in the Congress, uh, but uh, discussions about data sovereignty. This was a large discussion when we approved the Marco Civil many years ago, uh, for instance, uh, on data localization. So these are discussions that come again and again in, in the country. And the term digital sovereignty is, is increasingly cited in, in Brazilian legislative bills and in public documents. Uh, if we take, for instance, uh, current discussions on, on platform regulation and, and cybersecurity proposals, they include explicitly sovereignty as a strong motivation for uh, the, the proposal of bills. But of course, uh, th this, this is a question, it's not only a problem in Brazil, but it's overall that there is no clear or shared definition of what a sovereignty means. There are many flavors of sovereignty. Yeah, well, for instance, the economic issue, as Raquel uh, has uh, presented before, the technological uh, question, the, the data sovereignty, and so on. So, uh, which was then our, uh, our proposal? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah. We uh, partnered, the Brazilian chapter of the Internet Society, we partnered with CEPI, that's a, a research center at uh, the FGV, a very prestigious uh, academic institution in Brazil, to develop a project which is partly funded by Internet Society uh, Foundation. It started uh, about one year ago, and it's going on. And the, the, the main project objectives is to qualify the academic and public policy debate on sovereignty, and starting with an analysis of the Brazilian context, explore all the social technical dimensions of this debate and its technological and legal challenges. And uh, uh, because there are so many flavors of sovereignty and uh, sovereignty is invoked for, for various proposals in the country and elsewhere, uh, we uh, try to identify notions of sovereignty built from uh, various stakeholders' narratives uh, from various sectors, taking into account uh, the legal, social, uh, economic, and political implications, and, and, and trying to connect this uh, uh, analysis of the Brazilian context, connect not only to the local level, but also to the regional and global levels. So, as uh, uh, concrete goals, the project aims to map and discuss, first, whether and in which sectors the discussion on digital sovereignty has emerged as a trend, which, in second place, which narratives have guided this debate in an attempt to secure public support uh, and based on which justifications? So why is sovereignty being used as a motivation uh, to, to, to secure public support for various proposals that, that are uh, uh, going on in Brazil? How, then in third place, how the relationship between digital sovereignty and the internet takes place in the Brazilian debate? And the final goal is uh, how the creation or change of policies and legislative instruments are linked, uh, the linked to these narratives from the various sectors implies local and global challenges, uh, both in technical and political and social terms. As Raquel said, one of the, uh, the, the global challenge we have is uh, how we can avoid uh, fragmentation and, uh, and in some t sometimes some uh, regulatory proposals or legislative proposals uh, motivated by a fair claim of digital sovereignty may have unintended consequences uh, for the, the, the fundamental characteristics of the internet. And we, will, uh, uh, we are trying to explore those uh, relationships. So now I go to, pass to, to Anna, which is online, and we'll continue this presentation. Thank you, Flavio. Thank you, Ra Ra Raquel.
of introducing uh, the broad and the Brazilian context that creates the great opportunity of our research. And I may say I could be uh, with you in YouTube, but I'm glad that we have this online too and participation that allows me to be with you from Sao Paulo. So uh, hello to everybody that is attending and thank you for your time as well. As mentioned before, the digital sovereignty term is increasingly cited in the Brazilian legislative bills and other public documents, but without a clear shared definition, this is something that we are willing to work in deep our discussions. It creates for us as academic researchers a great and important uh, opportunity to identify and relate with understandings, as Flavio has mentioned just before. And uh, most cases refer to digital sovereignty related to internet. We are also open and interested to connect our local impacts and discussions to the global challenges. Being here is a great opportunity uh, regarding our project related to this. So to achieve our, uh, if you could uh, go to the next slide, Hakel, thank you. To achieve uh, the goals and uh, the objects mentioned, research is based on three main sources of data and information. First, I highlight the desk research to collect public documents and other types of publications from different sectors and uh, to map narratives and stakeholders involved in Brazilian debates. This is our main base, the base of our research. And the database built with all the documents collected has been studied for the methodic analysis and we want to identify the narratives at, that are at play, who has been part of this discussion, which instruments are considered and for what reason. Uh, in, the, in the end of the project, we will share uh, an impact brief and other documents showing all these relations and all the results of this, this uh, goal. Alongside this effort, we have a study group on digital sovereignty and internet governance topics that happen monthly. And we have conducted several interviews with experts and researchers to advance some of these debates. And uh, I must say some of our colleagues are there, there with you uh, in Kyoto and other here line attending this uh, panel. So they are also welcome to to join the discussion later. Then I can summarize this as our main uh, methodological approach regarding the, the research. Now we are almost reaching the one year project milestone as Flavio mentioned, and our conversations and even the study group, I must say, they started even before the project. And we now we are going to a uh, important and second phase of the, the project. You can go one slide, another slide, please, Hakel. Here you can see uh, our project timeline to have uh, as a reference. Uh, the preliminary results we are share, I will share in the next slide are based mainly on this great effort of the first year. So now considering the, the documents mapping and the interviews and also the, the conversations and the discussions with researchers and experts, and we are very excited that soon we will start, uh, we'll begin an open and free online training course exploring the digital sovereignty issues, some topics that we discussed and collected during the research. Uh, this is the third year, uh, third experience of this kind of course that CEPI and ISOC Brazil has been, has powered uh, together and uh, it works with public calls for applicants that we want to attend the course. And this, the people, the, the students, the, the participants are selected based on gender, race, sector, professions, regionals, diversity. We want and we uh, try to make a very uh, diverse public during, uh, to join the, the initiative with us. We are also uh, working a lot to have public agents and also journalists with us so we can uh, expand and help them to reflect the theme in their daily activities. The course will be based on record lectures, suggested bibliography and discussions activities, and uh, 
if you have interest in the end, uh, all the content and all the, the, the videos and the material will be shared at Isaac uh, webpage, Isaac Brazil and SEP's webpage. So it will be also a, a open content to everybody that has interest in this, in this theme. And also focused on community outreach, we'll have uh, webinars, public events, and the impact brief that I have mentioned that will be launched in the end of the projects. If uh, we'll share with you the news, uh, you can follow us and you can know the updates about the project. But uh, I cannot stop uh, and my, my participation here uh, without talking about the uh, main results until now that we have in the, the research. Uh, with the literature, the desk uh, research with the literature review, it brings us the main challenges regarding the theme and mainly considering compatibility between traditional sovereignty of states and open and borderless nature of the internet, as Hakel has mentioned. But many of the concepts and the, the, the impacts discussed from the global, the, the global north do not necessarily apply to the reality of the global south. So it's a very important uh, space for us to discuss our perspectives, our realities, and to connect all these agendas. Our mapping effort is an ongoing task due to the theme relevance nowadays in the country. And by now we have um, more than 2,040, uh, 245 documents gathered and analyzed, uh, as I mentioned, in, in regarding our, our methodological approach. And uh, this database contains bills, laws, reports from different instances, and also uh, news articles, media articles, that helps us to understand how uh, the, the theme, the digital sovereignty, has been uh, an important issue in the Brazilian context. Since the beginning of the mapping, uh, it's also possible to verify and to, to uh, discuss that it that the using the term digital sovereignty didn't not provide us meaningful results when we use this as a keyword, then uh, we needed to amplify our strategy and look for themes that were related to the, 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 the thematic but sometimes without the explicit use of the term, so we could reach uh, more um, publications that are connected to, to the agenda. And uh, after this, multiple and diverse, uh, diverse understandings or, uh, are at stake, and bring, we bring them uh, to some, kind of, some main con context, some main, um, understand is that it's important to share with you that our relations between digital sovereignty and self-determination, data self-determination, states power to regulate, uh, jurisdiction, technological or scientific development, national security, open source softwares, softwares among others. So it's just to highlight some of the key themes related to, to the discussion, but there are, there are more. It's, these are the, the main ones. Uh, and regarding the 15 semi structured structure interviews that we carried out, they uh, ratify, they confirm some of the results we have collected and analyzed from the, the desk research. And the main one is that uh, only one view indicated that he uh, understood and he saw he could identify consensus about the definitions of uh, digital sovereignty in Brazil. And he uh, associated it to the governance and uh, uh, to the government and to the society capacity to rule the development of the, the country and to use uh, digital technology to collect data. But if he was the only one, the other for 14 interviewees, they shared different perceptions and all of them uh, were uh, very clear saying, very, we don't 
is still uh, a consensus. We don't have uh, a common, a shared definition or a shared understanding about it, but uh, many of them associated to artificial intelligence and to misinformation and fake news agenda as the context Flavio shared in the beginning of his presentation uh, shows. And so the interviews, they also provide us with very different perspectives uh, related to political, legal, and technical lenses, as uh, Raquel mentioned. And uh, it's interesting to say that uh, they related uh, at the same time uh, the digital sovereignty to as an instrument to guarantee rights to citizens in different areas, such as consumer and minority groups' rights. At the same time, they are very afraid of power imbalance and somehow of the impact uh, outside the, 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 the Brazil uh, limits. So this is something that I, I would like to highlight. highlight. But I'm afraid of my time, so I'll stop here, uh, reinforcing that I would like to in invite you, if you have interest, to follow us, CEPI's, uh, CEPI and the uh, ISOC Brazil uh, website and social network, so you can be updated about our next steps. And thank you all for your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions or comments later. Thank you very much, Anna. And uh, you were missed here in Japan, but next time, uh, hopefully, we are all together. Um, so uh, with that, we finished uh, the, the presentations. And uh, the idea, uh, just to recap on uh, this session, is to share the project that is ongoing between Isaac Brazil and, and SAP FGV, um, where we are looking uh, into digital sovereignty, um, uh, the, the document, the, the, the documentation and the interviews that are uh, being collected are going to draw um, uh, a course and then uh, materials and documents that we are uh, shaping to understand uh, all the nuances and how digital sovereignty is understood in the country. Uh, but it's also grounded into the Internet Society, the, the, the global um, uh, work that is being done also uh, in relations to internet fragmentation and um, uh, the, the understanding of digital sovereignty uh, worldwide. Uh, and uh, uh, now uh, our intent was not only to share what we are doing, but also to collect inputs on uh, your views and any other uh, work that is uh, underway that could be useful for us to, to consider in this, in this project. So uh, I'm now opening up the, the, the microphone. There is, a, thank you, uh, Mark is going. Uh, there is a micro two microphones available. Uh, if anyone wants to make questions, please go ahead. Hello, hello. Um, Mark Derrigo speaking. I'm an internet governance consultant. So thank you for sharing the project. I have been following it. It's actually very interesting and deep. One question that I do have is Brazil has a long tradition of not only the bills that we are discussing, but a prior investment in digital sovereignty in the production of uh, technological equipment, in the development of open source code, and in a series of actions that predate um, the current discussion. So in a way, the country was already ahead of the curve like some other countries that preceded this movement. So has the group started looking into that more historical approach and trying to understand if that has any correlation with the, the current developments or if this is these are different um, phenomena that are happening in different places in time? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And I'm going to take uh, both questions and then go back to the presenters. Raul. Okay, Raul Echeverria from Malay. Uh, <coughs> I have two questions. One is that um, I saw very recently a paper published by um, by Luca Belli from uh, FGB about digital digital sovereignty in Brazil and India. And I wonder if it is, has any relation with this work or is uh, absolutely a parallel uh, line. Okay, good that I, I, I'm seeing your sh faces. Uh, oh, because the, 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 I, I didn't understand if it was related because the, it's a, like an anticipation of the, of the results of the work that you are doing. And the, 
The second uh, question is that if, uh, if you are considering as uh, one possible, uh, or you are questioning the, the, the expression itself, digital sovereignty, and that, because uh, one thing is trying to find what's the, 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 the meaning of the expression, but uh, what about if the, if the expression has no, if it doesn't make sense in, at, at all, uh, right? Uh, in fact, every time that I, s I read things about uh, digital sovereignty, really what they are trying to speak is, uh, is, uh, is about uh, digital independence or technological independence, uh, this, the same way that we speak about energy or foods in, uh, in all countries, but uh, it, it doesn't exist such, such thing like uh, food uh, sovereignty or, or, or energy sovereignty because uh, the, there is no any country in the world that is absolutely independent in everything about in relation with everywhere, uh, everybody in this. So the, um, just open question, thank you. Thank you very much, Raul, and very valuable questions. Uh, I, I think there is another question and then we go <laughs> uh, to Anna, Flavio, and I might contribute. Ale. It's a really short one. It has to do with how we just asked it. Ale, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. I'm Alexandre Costa Barbosa. I'm also uh, joining the discussions of the SAP FGV Isaac uh, Research Group on Digital Sovereignty. I'm a fellow at the Vines and Mao Institute. Uh, it's actually, I'd like to hear a bit more about, allow me to ask this question, and how is it going to really relate with the, the research conducted by uh, the FGV CTS? Because uh, uh, how actually this the research group from CTS is working with digital sovereignty for a long time, right? So how can we co combine the efforts that's being conducted by by São Paulo? Once, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ale. Uh, so I'm just going to give a, a, a brief putting my, my head as <laughs> also part of the Isaac Brazil chapter um, to say that we invited Luca Belli. He joined one of the uh, the group uh, sessions, the local group uh, sessions, uh, precisely so we could find uh, some of the synergies in the project. But uh, Luca Belli uh, work uh, is is focusing on cybersecurity, so digital sovereignty uh, understood as uh, those of national security uh, protection. Um, and while we're looking into this project into a wider um, and, and broad view of digital sovereignty, also including um, uh, the technological issues and, and the political and legal uh, implications. So uh, I'm going to pass uh, to, to Flavio and Anna if they also want to comment, but I think this is important to, to be clear on uh, the, the, the parallel work that is being done, but it's not um, a competition. It's really uh, that we are uh, in this moment in Brazil where this is uh, such an important issue that more and more uh, research is blossoming, which is, uh, it, which is a good way. Uh, and then we are looking for the synergies on how to work together. So th um, that's my, my reaction. Flavio. Yeah, uh, Raul, maybe you, you are not aware, but the FGV is a very large academic institution with many different groups and, and even in different cities. So Luca Bell is in Rio, it's one group, and uh, we are partnering here with uh, FGV Sao Paulo, which is a different group. And so, as, as Raquel said, we, we are trying to, to keep a dialogue with Luca Belli and his team. He, we invited him to, to discuss with us, uh, but uh, we are taking really the different directions, I, 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 I suppose. And uh, regarding the question from Mark uh, on, on we are looking for all documents, all public documents and, and bills and, and public policies that uh, are uh, use explicitly the, the concept of digital sovereignty as a motivation or are related to digital sovereignty. In this regard, of course, Brazil has a long past tradition of uh, uh, digital sovereignty uh, approaches, yeah, the, 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 the development of local technologies uh, back in the 70s. And in the 80s, we had a very strong uh, industrial policy for, for the development of local technology. So, of course, this also uh, is of interest for the project, for the mapping we are trying to, 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 to build. Uh, 
but uh, this is more a historical thing. So we are more interested in what's happening now, which are the current discourses of different uh, stakeholders and how this can impact uh, the devolution of the internet in the country. And on regarding the other question from, from uh, Raul. Uh Self-determination. You wanna, uh, let's put Anna and then yeah. I can tackle yeah. this one if needed. And we have more questions uh, in a moment. Uh, Milton, I'm just taking it. Uh, Anna, do you wanna make any reactions? We have more questions uh, coming from the floor soon. Yes, just a brief contribution uh, regarding the historical approach that Mark uh, has questioned. Uh, I can say re reinforce what the Flavio's perspective about our short term, I must say, uh, interest looking to the, the present, looking to the, the ongoing controversy and debates going on. But uh, we'll be able, uh, I'm pretty sure, to, to build a, an interesting timeline regarding the, the main topics and some kind of trends uh, related to the discussion in Brazil. Uh, that I, I would say they are very recent in the way you're framing and the, what you're looking for uh, regarding the, the, the past. And uh, also related to FGV, thank you, Raquel and Flavio, for introducing the, that we are a big institution and we have very different but connected centers. And uh, I would say that uh, we are very open and uh, uh, connected to, to the CTS agenda. They, are, they have great materials and research on this theme. But in our research, we are looking, um, I would say, in a broader approach. Uh, we, we want to, to have this kind of uh, understand and have this connection with uh, CTS approach, but not as the only approach on the table, we ha have seen other perspectives and controversial perspectives going on. So we want to understand them and uh, go deeper inside the narratives and the, 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 the main uh, questions and issues in their background. So we can also even contribute to, to CTS research in some way. So this is uh, something I would like to add. And finally, regarding the, the, the meaning that Raul shared the, 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 in his question, uh, that this expression, sometimes we don't have any, uh, a sense at all. It's a very good uh, point. Raul, thank you for sharing it. And uh, uh, it's a personal perspective, I'd say. Sometimes some expressions are used like in a, as a hype, as a, people bring them to, to make sense, to connect to very different reasons and, and, and the subjects, and it lacks somehow the connection with the first or, or the main core it could uh, uh, represent or it could uh, uh, make sense. So this is one thing that we must, uh, we are very worried about, but uh, the, the, the main issue, I would say, they are still connected to critical infrastructure. When you say, told about uh, the food and the energy, and somehow they share this kind of um, relevance. They appear with this relevance and the, the need for let's talk about it, let's make it uh, happen. But something that we have been discussing that is that we're still in the words uh, place, you know, I, we're not with, with concrete uh, agendas, uh, I would say with concrete initiatives. Uh, in between, besides the, the discussions about AI and uh, fake news that we've mentioned, but it's um, more, it's still something more discussed, but without a uh, concrete impact yet. Uh, but many things are happening. Thank you very much, Anna. I think uh, uh, in regard to the, the second questions from Raul, uh, if that's going to be a uh, patchwork where you have an organized view of these meanings or if that's a crazy kaleidoscope, that's going to be answered uh, <laughs> by the end of the, the, the research. And then we have Milton. Uh, uh, you want to take the floor? Sure. I. Um missed uh, the first part of your talk, but uh, I know that we're having a conversation about um, 
uh, the legitimacy of internet governance in the, the multi-stakeholder environment and also uh, digital sovereignty. And um, I think one thing I want to ask you about, uh, when most people talk about digital sovereignty, they think about it only for themselves or their community, right? The problem with that is that the notion of sovereignty in a political and legal sense is in, in inherently means a kind of exclusivity, right? So if I have sovereignty as, let's say, the United States, then you don't, right? And if Brazil has sovereignty over its internet, then, uh, you know, Venezuela and Europe and the U.S. don't. And so uh, I, th I would like to encourage you to think about the international relations aspect of sovereignty uh, and, and not hold it up as some kind of uh, fantasy where everybody can control everything for themselves, but they don't have to worry about anything else. That's just a, a fantasy. And the other thing is, you, you're all involved in ICANN, so you all know that one of the best things we did when we created ICANN was we got it out of the sovereign system, right? We said names and numbers are gonna be uh, not governmentally run, and so uh, that's been very successful at making sure that uh, certain aspects of internet uh, coordination are not politicized. So I, I want to make pe sure people understand, you know, the term sovereignty has an, an appeal to people, but it's, it's not a one-way street. It's, it's going to be competing claims of sovereignty, and sometimes those claims can, be, can kick off power struggles which uh, actually hurt things. That's a very, very uh, good point, Milton. And I just want to make sure that also uh, to, to understand part of the the work we are doing right now, the, the first phase, let's say, is really capturing the photograph. So uh, how it's being used uh, in, in the documents and uh, how people are really seeing sovereignty. So it doesn't mean that this is the understanding that we have, but it's really capturing how it's being used. And uh, this is going to be really important for the next phase as now we, we try to organize this uh, into something that is uh, more uh, of a proposition uh, of what digital sovereignty should be understood. Uh, but I think Flavio wants. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, you, you missed the, the, the first part of the presentation here, and then the, the background is exactly the, 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 the thing you said, Milton, that uh, we also worry about uh, those uh, claims of digital sovereignty possibly hurting some fundamental aspects of the internet. And of course, most people, when they talk about sovereignty, uh, about self-determination, about uh, the, the, the te local technological development uh, or the local control of, of data of Brazilian citizens, of public data uh, from Brazilian uh, uh, public service and so on, they maybe are not aware of the implic possible implications of the legislations or regulations that uh, can be imposed. And so this is, uh, then we in the project are very much aware of those things and uh, following the line of the, the Internet Society approach that uh, digital sovereignty, if uh, not well understood and not well implemented, may hurt some fundamental characteristics of the Internet and uh, we are very much aware of this. Thank you very much, Flavio. And we have one last question before we wrap up. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Peter Bruck. I'm from the chairperson of the World Summit Awards. I'm from Austria, and I initiated there the Data Intelligence Initiative. And we talked a lot about uh, the issue of data sovereignty, especially in the context uh, in Europe. And what Milton was saying is very interesting because he gives us the legal definition and the legal implications. I see that the term sovereignty, and I think that this is also very much reflected in some of what you have said, is a way of asserting control in a situation where you don't feel that you have control. So it is a process term in that sense, a process term on the way to see if you can empower yourself to get control over something. So you're striving for sovereignty. 
And then I think this what would, would be important then is, is that you are then getting into a situation of negotiation with the others. And I think this is something which we need to really I mean, see. Uh, I'm very interested at the IGF and at, at all conversations here that we are looking at things which are doable and not fantasy. And I think it's very important that uh, this term sovereignty is seen as a term enabling people to claim control over whatever is happening in the digital sphere on many, many different levels. So I just wanted to add this to Milton's intervention and thank you very much also for your smart conversation and uh, uh, reply. Thank you very much for uh, for this contribution. And I think it's important and adds to uh, our goal here, which is precisely to understand how, first to understand how it's being used and then uh, to help educate uh, where, the, uh, where we want to take this uh, uh, from. And then I'm going to give uh, one minute <laughs> wrap up to Flavio and Anna just uh, to say a few thoughts and then uh, we, we need to close the session and go for the next. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel, and thank you for all uh, for coming and, and sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, as I said, we are trying to, to have a photograph of what are the, the, the narratives from the different sectors in this area in Brazil and try to relate this to the, to the global dis uh, discussion on, on sovereignty and, and just uh, also as a mean to educate the people in Brazil. So we are collecting uh, information and then we will uh, spread the conclusions of the project to the, the wider community, not only in Brazil, but in the region and Latin America and, and globally, uh, so that people understand these different uh, flavors of sovereignty and the legal and, and technological and social implications of uh, those uh, proposals and those definitions, so that we are really trying to contribute to the debate and show that the the implications of uh, uh, sovereign, the different definitions of sovereignty and the different implications of uh, public policies or legislations or regulations that are uh, imp proposed to be implemented uh, following uh, the this motivation of sovereignty. And and I conclude here. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Flavia. Flavio, <laughs> Anna. Well, I would like also to thank you all for your contribution. Uh, you are very insightful. And I want to enforce that uh, at the same time, we want to look at the Brazilian context and uh, the Brazilian debate somehow and the, their implication. We, are, we have this goal to not keep on looking only f uh, inside and on looking at our, in our, to our reality, to our context. And this kind of uh, dialogue with other perspectives and other realities, uh, other understandings and impacts, they are very important for us. And uh, we will keep this. Uh, we will keep with this uh, uh, aim until the end of the project to make this uh, discussion broader, uh, in, but also to contribute, as Flavio mentioned, to to our. Uh, uh, country. So I uh, would reinforce you are very uh, welcome also to share and send feedbacks and other suggestions and uh, to be connected to our research, not only uh, in this, during this panel, but also after. It will be a pleasure to, to keep in touch with you. So thank you uh, again and uh, Raquel. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ana, Flavio, uh, also Pedro and, and Lori, who are who are supporting online. Uh, we need to wrap up uh, because the next session is going to start soon. Uh, and thank you very much for everyone for the contributions. We keep. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, here at the IGF, available for any conversations you want to have and, and further inputs for the project. Uh, next is a legitimacy of the multi-stakeholderism in IG spaces. Thank you very much. <laughs>